Yes, that's other history. Yeah. Cool. And it's a larger space, is it? Definitely much larger than the uh, old space. Um, yeah. The old space was just, well, a little bit bigger than a classroom in the old yeah. secondary school. It was the old Catholic high boys school on Queen Street. So I think we've got, we're looking at something like six times the original floor area with oh, the man. new space. Yeah. That's cool. That's cool. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Melvin. I'm one of the uh, collaborators for this space called Hot House. Uh, maybe I give a general brief introduction. I won't take very long. And after that, I'll pass the time to uh, John who will introduce the, the dialogue and the topic and the, and so on. So uh, I'm also gonna give a, a rough, maybe summary of everyone's bios as well. So uh, welcome to Hot House. I think I see some familiar faces from yesterday and a few other days before. Um, so we are still uh, amidst uh, the ongoing open studio uh, where we are kind of showing some processes uh, that uh, the three groups of us, uh, Intermission, for Maxims and Currency, uh, have been uh, co-creating and, and, and working on separately as well. Uh, so I think uh, maybe after this talk, or if you all want to mingle and, and, and look around, I think a lot of things left around the studio are actually just some process and visuals that could be quite interesting for you to explore, especially if some of you are artists, uh, designers, or maybe coming from Archifest, who also have our program listed. I think some of you all uh, know this event through that. Otherwise, I think also through our own channels as Hot House. Um, I think Hot House in general has been around for about three years. I think we have been working largely as a studio space where we, we, we host events and, and work with artists to develop projects. But at the same time, we also work on our separate projects as well. And where you are sitting is usually where we generally work. So once in a while, we do events uh, seasonally or have open studios. Uh, this is the first time we are having it in, in uh, conjunction with, uh, as a kind of like a public uh, uh, event for, in, in, in conjunction with Singapore Design Week. Uh, and the focus actually uh, is about hybrid horizons, which is looking at different disciplines coming together. Uh, how do we think or rethink the idea of uh, art, um, perhaps in the lens of you know, an environment of, of creative work where things start to blur in boundaries and, and we start to collaborate across different disciplines. So this particular dialogue session actually uh, focuses specifically on, the, on art, uh, but perhaps thinking about it in terms of education and how it kind of like uh, informs maybe, uh, especially today in the day and age where we think about art, uh, how, how, how do art and, and the idea of education or even design, uh, because often schools uh, think about this uh, um, as, a, as a school in itself where you know, artists and designers do come to the same school. Uh, so I think this is something that we, uh, maybe John will probably talk a little bit more about. Um, but I think without further ado, I'll just give a general introduction uh, to everybody, so about everybody. So Martin, hi, can you hear me? Hi, I can hear you. Yes, um, um, so he's quite an accomplished artist uh, who has gained recognition both in Europe and Asia. Uh, he has actually uh, uh, have artwork commissioned by people like David Bowie, Elton John and Iggy Pop, and also has taught a lot of artists uh, uh, residing in Singapore, uh, like Charles, uh, Guo Liang, uh, Yan Yun, and, and a couple of others. So I think, um, he has initially pursued a career as an art teacher, influencing numerous artists along the way. However, in 2001, I think he's, you have shifted also from traditional to digital uh, media as part of the collabor collaborative uh, project Grief Perspective. Currently, you reside in Vietnam and you serve as a head of uh, digital media program in RMIT. Uh, in Vietnam, where you engage in visual effects and explore computational aesthetics through collaboration and creative engineers. So um, this is Martin. And then we have Suzy. Uh, Suzy is a versatile writer, artist, curator, and, and educator with a broad interdisciplinary background. Uh, you've taught at universities and art colleges in Australia, Singapore, and the UK. Uh, Dr. Suzy Lingam has also have uh, influential roles such as being the creative director for the Singapore Biennale in 2016 and also the director of Singapore Museum from 2013 to 2016. Uh, her tenure at the museum played a pivotal role in shaping the vision, curatorial direction and acquisition uh, strategy. 
Uh, she's also responsible for organizing numerous exhibitions and has left quite a significant mark in the, in the institution. John as well, I think, has worked in the Singapore Art Museum. Uh, he's now an independent curator and exhibition maker and has been an essential figure in the art world. Uh, during his time uh, as an assistant curator in the Singapore Art Museum, he's created uh, several exhibitions and, and worked on several events such as the Singapore Binali as well in 2016 and also in 2019. Uh, he's also been commissioned uh, artworks as finalists for the Benizi Award. John Tang is also an editor of the Singapore Art Museum's first publication, documenting its exhibition history. And his recent endeavors as an independent curator has been uh, SIPF, the Singapore International Photography Festival, and, and examined uh, uh, the Artist Initiative Fifth, Fifth Passage, which I think today is the last day uh, of an... Oh, South Station. Oh, right, right. Yeah, so sorry. Um, his, uh, his projects like the... Forest Institute and the gathering demonstrate that his, uh, your, your commitment also to, to working curatorially and, and, and working with different arts groups and artists. So, all right, without further ado, uh, thanks so much for listening to all the bios. I think I'll just pass the time to John and I hope he can give a general uh, better introduction. I would be happy to. Thank you so much, Melvin. That was very, very gracious of you. Um, and a very good evening to everyone. Thank you for picking this uh, Saturday night. You know, um, it's a good day to, it's a good time to actually have dinner somewhere nice but here you're with us and here we are going to be talking about art school design school pedagogy uh, maybe i'll just ramble on a bit and you know just give some context um, to the talk this evening um, i think the title that we had put up in the end was art by design what makes the perfect art school and even in the lead up to it all of us had you know various bits of discomfort with as to what to title this particular talk we had questions of uh, issue with the, the question of perfection, you know, what, what's really perfect. Um, we were also mulling over uh, how does, you know, art school fit into the design week, right? And I think that was one of the questions that was raised earlier. Why are they talking about art schools during the design week? And I think, well, evidently, there's quite a number of art schools which do train designers. And there's quite a number of design schools that do produce artists. There are artist designers, designer artists. And I think there are many intersections across what is perceived currently to be two distinct disciplines. And so I'm really hoping and really looking forward to the conversation between these two very, very established individuals that I well actually do have next to me, just that you know Martin is kind of mediated through the MacBook Pro right here on my left um, and to really get some insights as to what art school is all about, you know, what are its goals, what are the outcomes, what is the function that it serves within a sociological sort of context. But I think perhaps the most important question that we should kind of try to address first is when, where, how and why was you know, that distinction between art and design really drawn to begin with, you know, um, where does that distinction actually lie? Um, and I'm not sure. Uh, Martin, maybe you would like to start on that, you know, share some thoughts on okay, where do you think okay. that distinction is being made presently? Cool, cool. Well, we've got, uh, how many questions we've got all together? One, two, three, four, five. And I made a few notes and of, of all the questions, the, the notes to this question were the most, well, the longest and the most verbose, but I'm going to keep it super, super brief, well, as brief as I can. Uh, uh, well, one part of the question, I think, can be answered very, very simply. That, that design, that, uh, uh, it's hard to say that there was such a thing as design, let's say, 600 years ago. Uh, design as a, as a profession came when uh, we moved into the Industrial Revolution and, and the, the, the requirements for a, a separate person to sit at a table and design the stuff that was being manufactured, that, 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 that came about. But from the point of view of what we're talking today, I think it's, uh, it's really interesting to see how art and design collide in, the, uh, in, in schools. And, uh, and the history isn't really a very good one at all. Um, so, for example, the Royal College was founded because 
designers weren't being served very effectively by the academies. Um, you, you could also say that the, uh, the polytechnics, you know, famous in Singapore, they were founded in Germany for exactly the same reason as a repos in, in the, uh, the belief that they weren't being served effectively elsewhere. And at every point where art and design are, are delivered in the same program under the same roof, it's been generally a failure. You could say, well, Barhaus, Barhaus went, went out of the way to unite art and design. But, the, well, they, they might have tried, but I don't think they succeeded. I mean, it's, it's hard to say that they had any significant impact on fine art. Um, uh, but I think, I think the reason for that, and certainly, certainly, as, as, a, as, a, as an addendum to that train of thought, certainly my experience of teaching those students in uh, ADM within the various applied art programs, uh, 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 any, any, any student that wanted to become a fine artist had a very tough time. So, so the, the idea of, of, of art and, and fine art and applied art under the same roof, under the same curriculum, it's, it's not a, it's not a health, it hasn't got a healthy history, let's put it that way. And I think the simple reason is this, and this is really the, the real thing I want to say, but it, there isn't, it's, it's, not, it's not how, it's not what's produced. You've just got to look at some of the work that Melvin has done, which uh, it's, it's either very designy art or arty design, it's, it's hard to say. It's, 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 it's not the stuff, it's the way it's discussed. And, and, uh, and, and therein lies the rub uh, um, you, you take you take some you take an, an object and you call it art and it, it can it can be evaluated in one establishment as being a fantastic success you take it into a, a, a design school it could be a complete failure so it's it, yeah and, and that's that's I think is the reason why art with design has has never had a happy time uh, in an art in an art school or a design school or whatever we choose to call it right so it seems that you're you you're, you're kind of injecting this idea that the rubrics of assessment for these two disciplines are also um very very much distinct you know they serve separate masters if you know i could yeah I could put it that yeah. way i don't know Susie, do you have something to add to that i think we uh in coming up with the uh can hear it i no. Uh, I think you're coming up with a with a, a title for this. I mean, uh, Martin can attest when you know in trying to get me to do this talk, I was yeah. so I was so reluctant because uh, for many reasons, uh, one of which is the the, uh, the thing called art education uh, is not something I understand anymore. I think uh, <laughs> on account of some surgeon in uh, in in a context that was much more catered for training for technology. They have the word art in it, but uh, the focus is is uh. all, all technology, and so I think uh, and and at, at you know, at any point I uh, brought up stuff, anything whether it's curriculum design or ideas for something or whatever, it would be uh, quite sternly put down with a, this is not art school, Susie. <laughs> no, this is not art school, Susie. Yeah. Um, and and then so that makes you wonder what is art school. Right, it, that is, it's so, uh, you know, it, that that uh, the, the flaming crosses say like, don't bring us here. Uh, what 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 are the qualities of of what we call art school? We've we've only got two in Singapore, technically. Although ADM, mm. so ADM is is it, you know it's quite different because the, the 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 two art schools offer diplomas and then they uh, and those diplomas, both art schools, uh, will only well in context, I think ninety nine, I think nineteen ninety nine when. When it was recognized as as a qualification by the government, the diplomas. I mean, uh, and then whatever degree programs that were offered by the two institutions. Sorry, okay. Whatever degree programs were usually franchise programs from overseas, uh, you know, and uh, the the institutions that pay for that expertise comes in, and you know, like any other franchise program, just run a, a preset curriculum. So not sure how. <laughs> In terms of uh, that's working, right? But uh, 
obviously had, things supposedly have come a long way, but there are even both in LaSalle and Nafa there are uh, departments that that uh, have the design education very very much so. They're, so they're very separate. The departments are very the schools they call them I think are very separate. School of Fine Art as opposed to in LaSalle John what uh, School of Design or Media and Design or what something like that. I I remember, yeah, those those things. So they have very different pedagogies obviously mm -hmm. uh and i think quite importantly is uh you say different masters it, there is a sense that uh design is much more um applicable right so it's applicable and therefore it, uh, this notion of employability for someone who graduates from a design school uh, is a lot higher right from from than from an artist so the the the, the ideals i i remember having this strange conversation Quite some time ago, when I was at uh, NAFA, uh, coordinating the, B the BA and MA programs, Huddersfield University, uh, and then we had some talks and organized some talks and stuff. And one of the things that uh, uh, somebody invited a, a gallerist to come in uh, and talk to the, to the graduating students, or even just the students, I think, I think they were masters and BA students, uh, you know, and gave them a good talking to to say, you know, or us are good, no, the educators are good talking to to say, what are you educating these people to do? You know, you're asking them to do this impossible, the impossible, useless, uncollectible stuff, right? Like build a nest of clay in the middle of a room, right? And say something important <laughs> or, uh, you know, make sculpture or butter and, and then let it dissolve, right? So, and then the, and the galleries can't sell those things. So that, that is that. So they're actually making a big complaint about that, you know, uh, to say, right. I won't mention which gallery, but it, very practical, very practical, right? To say, so what, what, what are you training these people to think? Some strange ideal about, about the purity of a, right. of a problem uh, and, and leaving it at that. So, yeah, so that's kind of my, my sense about that dichotomy, I think, yeah. You know, early on, uh, we brought into this, you know, now I think we're really getting into this serving of different masters and rude bricks of assessment, you know, and I think... I think we should kind of dive into it a little bit, you know, this notion of the rubrics of assessments, you know, the measurements of success, you know, for this a little bit better. Mm -hmm. how, how would we measure that with respect to an art school that, you know, well, or a design school or an art school that teaches design or a design school that, that teaches art? You know, Susie, you, mm -hmm. you mentioned a little bit about how, you know, um, in one of your places of work, you were told explicitly that this is not a design, this is not an art school, even though, you know, art played a very, very, very important part into their system, uh, into the education, you know, of the students there. Art was a, a big part of the, the topics that were examined. Uh, we're not going to list name names, but um, if it was not an, an art school, how did they specifically frame themselves? How did they position themselves? And what were their goals for the students in that respect? Similar to what? Uh, I think Martin, this this idea of a polytechnic, right? So the polytechnics have a uh, the 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 drive is uh, an engagement, uh, direct engagement with industry. So it's it's you're producing graduates who respond to industry needs. Yeah, yeah, yeah basically that's it. Yeah. And, yeah. and Martin, what about yourself? You know, you you wrote quite extensively in you know our earlier discussions talking about um, the successful art school and how the uh, success of most art schools do not yeah. last for very long. They have their day in the sun and they kind of like fizzle out quite quickly thereafter. Yeah. Well, yeah, uh, uh, evaluation, I mean, it's all about evaluation nowadays, isn't it? So the, the, the bureaucrats want their, want to know which department to close, don't they? So and the, they, they want some kind of beauty parade. Um, but uh, I can tell you, uh, okay, so if, if, if you're judging the success of an art school, I think it's very different to judging the success of an artist or a or work of art. Um, those are all three on different planets. Um, but um, I, I could tell you an anecdote when I, from when I worked at Goldsmiths. And that at the time, but certainly at the beginning, beginning of my time there, Goldsmith's success, and, and I, I was in Basel Art Fair, and I was walking through the art fair, and it was like every uh, every couple of minutes, I would overhear people use, saying the word Goldsmith's, would be chatting to each other in German or Swiss or whatever, and I would hear the word Goldsmith's and Goldsmith's and Goldsmith's, and um, 
and I'm, I'm fairly certain that they weren't all talking about goldsmiths positively. But the fact was, it's like, it's like, it's like the man says, so you, you could speak ill of me or, or well of me just so long as you're talking about me. So, so, so I think that in summary, I think what, you're, what you want uh, is uh, of uh, what you want is to be in some way or other a, a, a brain worm. You, you want to infect the larger consciousness. You just want to you want people to be aware of you. Um, I'm not sure if, if it's if it can happen like it used to. I, I don't know. I uh, thinking about it. I, I, I can't see how art schools can be as successful as they were. Uh, I don't think that, that uh, I think they become too uh, bureaucratized. But that's that's perhaps going into the issue a little bit deeply. So yeah, I think I've answered. I've answered uh the question as you've asked it yeah uh, i think speaking mostly of them like you know in a in a public facing kind of sense but you know i i'm sure that a lot of individuals a lot of students that are going into art school themselves you know they have their own idea of like what they want to get out of a particular sort of curriculum or program mm -hmm. um and in that respect you know what would that school necessarily need to provide those students in order for the students to see it as, you know, a place that they would want to go to, uh, you know, being successful to, well, the consumer actually of the art school, because is it the student is the predominant consumer of that product, isn't it, Martin? Well, I think yeah. Um, certainly, reputation attracts, and I've seen I've seen that that uh, that that phenomenon. Uh, but uh, the, the, what the student wants from an art school and what uh, we hope an art school to be are, are, are two separate things, I think. Uh, and and really, uh, and the third thing, it's it's what an art, it's what a student is given. Um, so I think they should all all be considered separately. So uh, um, uh, you you could say, okay, you you could say that the the clients of an art school are the art students. Well, yeah, but also the client of an art school is. Uh, the nation, or or culture, or something like that. So, um, yeah, uh, got a bit lost there. Yeah, um, sorry. Could you just repeat that last line yeah. that you mentioned? Uh, the clients of the art school beyond the students. Who were they? I think we just lost you a bit because of the internet stutter. Well, I th think the, uh, the 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 client of an art school. You could say that it is an art student. But you could equally say that it's the, the public consciousness. So, um, uh, 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 yeah, so if, if we come back to the question, how do we know an art school is any good? It's, 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 it, it's not just that it's attracting students. Uh, I mean, certainly, let, let's say uh, students are being attracted to the name of a school like St. Martin's, uh, based on a reputation that was at its height about 30 years ago. So uh, it's no longer a cultural force. So I, I don't think it's the students that uh, are, are, are really the met have any play in the metric of an art school. I think I think an art school is a success or a failure uh, by by virtue of its cultural impact. Yeah, Susie, I saw you raise a brow, so... Just, just raise a brow, on, two or three. And <laughs> it's more like... Uh, no, uh, I like the point that, you know, you, you, you're saying the, the clients of the art school, sort of, you know, the bigger impact, the ripple, or what, you know, what's its purpose, what is it serving. But the, the same can be said for, for any, for any school. Um, it, it, the same can be said for any kind of educational institution, right? I mean, obviously it's serving... It's serving the, the people who need to be educated. And that fundamentally, the question is those people who are needing to be educated, whatever the field, uh, have, have, have impact. Uh, whether it's direct, let's say if it's design, it's much more direct. If it's art, then uh, it, it took a while. Uh, we, we can all attest to it, those of us who are Singaporeans. It took a while before the arts got taken seriously here. It took mm. a while. It, it was not yeah. on the top of the list of what was considered nation building. Uh, in the earlier yeah. decades, for the yeah, earlier yeah. decades, it wasn't. It, it wasn't 
seen as uh, economically viable or necessary or right for all the foundations of what it means to be a successful society and then it's it, and and i think strangely well it's not strange but you know a lot of people still think that uh, you, you know you've got okay you've got to have your basics right <laughs> in life and then and then and then the fluff for the frills come in and people tend to think of art that way i'm not sure if they think of culture that way you know yeah but okay so yeah. besides that's what why, why did i raise my eyebrow again Ah, okay. Right. Yeah, and, and also the, okay, so the, the idea of any art school, let, let's take art school, uh, but any school, because really art school or art college, right, uh, they do have many different departments that, that serve many different kind of clientele, right? But mm. it, universities anywhere, they are only as good as the faculty, fundamentally. So you know when when yeah. we when we advise students you okay. know when they when they are going to go on to further studies or whatever, uh, we advise them to you know first and foremost ask yourself what you want to do, uh, for what reason, and then you you find faculty rather than universities yeah. themselves per se, the people in universities who have the kind of expertise that would align with and resonate with with uh, in your research you that or your intended research, right? So. This oh. notion, which I find quite interesting, if if we think that way, and maybe I'm being idealistic, if we th we should be thinking that way, I think you know who, who are the people educating students, right? They should they should be oh. worth their salt in some way, they and they will have reputation. So if you're saying you know something like uh, Goldsmith, for for a time, what they were producing students who would you know that that was a happy coincidence, I think, in the '90s, you know, some kind of strange coincidence of having a benefactor and and then uh, daring do, but then. From the students' end of things, but definitely the lecturers would have been midwifing <laughs> that process, right, mm -hmm. to some extent, and and were practitioners practitioners themselves. So this is another thing, right? If 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 your if your faculty, if it's art or design, whatever, you're a practitioner yourself, and then you're educating, and you have your own reputation, you know, and the, and it, and it gets uh, in a way exponentially greater if the, the more on your faculty are. Uh, get to be known and then you build that up and the fact that you can you can trade and transact on a moment a camelot moment right for for, for 10 years or whatever you can trade and transact on a camelot moment for the next 30 years it's attest to it's it's mm -hmm. i think it's need that that people need that those moments the, the question now is why don't they last well faculty move <laughs> don't they yeah. uh, you know for many reasons things like that uh but the fact that you can trade on on, on a long shadow is, is very it it seems to be enough. It seems to be enough for for people, for students to be inspired. Yeah. yeah. What do you think is the is the shelf life of a, of an art school? No, how uh, how long? If, if an art school becomes good, how long do you think it can stay good for? I don't know. I I have never thought about it in terms of you know measurement, right? So I haven't done any research that way. But if you look yeah. at it, well, if you you've had some experience with Goldsmith and 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 whatever yeah. that still is, and Glasgow as well, isn't it? Glasgow School of Art. So, right, you had some uh, experience with Glasgow. that. Uh, well, I've got, I've got colleagues in Glasgow, uh, but uh, I, 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 I think that art schools are only. Uh, I think it's an obvious truth that art schools are like for a short time and then they go, and uh, uh, and I don't think you can bring bring it back once it's gone. I think you have to replace it with something else. So. Uh, and, and that has happened, so uh, um, so yeah, uh, yeah, th th that does happen. But yeah, like I say, I, I think art schools are good for only a short time. Uh, why that's so? I think it's just the nature of culture. Things things come and go. But the, okay. the just a good art schools thing. are a bit like boy boy bands. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, they get embarrassing after a while. Uh, I can tell you how art schools are evaluated in a university. It's simple research output, uh, and certainly I think in in a, in an art school, I think that's uh, about seventy five percent of scam. Uh, I might have overstated my position there, but um, I, for a start, I don't think you should be evaluating uh, uh, an art school according to something that comes from its its lecturers. It should be something that comes from its students. Mm. So uh, yeah. Wow. 
It's a bit of a chicken and egg thing, though. I mean, your, you, so your conditions, we, I mean, initially when we were talking about having this conversation, uh, I was proposing that we, we come up with, you know, as a kind of experiment, thought experiment, five tenets, right? Or five mm. conditions that would, wow. that would be the foundations of any creative institution, right? And, and I really do want to bridge the gap. Personally, I, I, I find it very problematic to, to divide things like this because, you know, I, I believe in the interdisciplinary kind of uh, uh, thing that both friction and, and, uh, and production, the, the, the fact that um, the con what, what would the, ideally, what would the conditions be? I mean, you know, and, and actually more fundamental than that, what is the point of an art school in yeah. any society? Yeah. So maybe this is something, you know, really please do think about it because, you know, when it comes to Q&A, I think this is something, what, what, what is the purpose of an art school for any society? Right. I'm really excited to jump in because I think we're going into a direction which actually I have a question which you know I am personally very very curious about. You know, Susie, you, you earlier on talked about how you know art for a very very long time was seen as something that was um, non-essential. It's not necessarily uh, well. We just had that report right during COVID, which put the number one on the non-essential list as the artists, and all artists wear berets and they keep a very well trimmed goatee. Uh, but the irony of the whole situation is that. You know, the very, very first ministry that was established in Singapore was actually the Ministry of Culture. And that was even pre-independence, right? And that was um, in during the period of self-governance. And I think it was 1958 when the Ministry of Culture was first established. And, you know, the Ministry of Culture had very, very explicit goals. It was through all of these arts and cultural policies, their goal was to create a new national identity. They was put as that one thing there, you know, on the table that, you know, arts and culture, you've got one job, you are supposed to result in a national identity for this particular country. And so that kind of brings me to, to this next question, right, which is, you know, the exact question you raised, what is the purpose of an art school? What is the aim of it? And if I can, you know, just answer this question a little bit by myself before I let you two take over, you know, one of the things that I have found exceedingly perplexing with respect to an art school is that, it designs programs or it produces programs according to, you know, how many potential subscribers they think that a particular module would attract, right? Um, and we have, you know, we have fine arts programs, we have art history programs, we have curatorial programs, etc., etc. But never at any point does is the question about um, would graduates from these variety of disciplines, uh, would they be able to find a job within the present economic system. And to me, that was very, very interesting as well. And so, yes, you could find the brightest and most brilliant minds, um, the, the ones who are most um, inspirational, and put them in, into these programs to, to train these students who have signed up for it. Um, but when they graduate, you know, they might not be able to find something that is relevant to what they have studied, or sometimes even tangentially related to it. Um, of course, you know, the response that we get is that, oh yeah, but you know, just because you studied fine art does not mean that you have to become a fine artist, you know, when you, you graduate, or just because you studied curating does not mean you have to become a curator. But then there's also the question about what about all of these people who actually want to be curators when they graduate? You know, where is the space for them in society? And so when we go back to this question of, you know, assessing, you know, the art school and its successes, I think Martin, you raise a very, very fair point to say that, you know, you know, a university ranking should not be dependent on the research output of its lecturers. It should be dependent on its students. And I think our local universities, they really excel at telling you how many percent of their graduates get employed within three months of graduation. You know, they love to say that, but they, they don't love to tell you what exactly they are doing upon graduation. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's my two cents worth. I, I don't know what, what do the two of you think about, you know, what should the the aim or purpose of art school be you know within that societal context so and also within that obviously art education it varies a lot right i mean what what is offered in any program what kinds of subjects for study uh one one of the things that has been and martin i guess you would know too you've been in singapore long enough uh you know art history is a, is a very recent thing in singapore it's it it was it was uh, for some yeah. reason, so taboo, yeah. uh, and you know, people have been arguing yeah. for 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 the fact that art history is not. I mean, it's 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 not just about teaching artists about art history. 
art history is actually culture, right? It, it's it's social, it's yeah. social, social cultural context that everybody needs to learn. Uh, yeah. And if you're if you're trying to educate anybody, anybody who is going to be anybody in anything. So, for instance, um, somebody might want to become a diplomat, right? And un yeah. and and learning art history is critical for a diplomat. They never they may have yeah. never raised a brush to paint anything in their life, and that does not matter. That's not the point. It's the nature of the subject. So art history is an example, right? Something like this. Yeah, so it's not all about, right. about practice lab stuff, right? Yeah. yeah. So that's one that's one good instance. Another one I remember I remember being on on a, on an advisory committee for for, for art college here. Yeah. Uh and um uh, this issue about employability, uh, you know, upon graduation and all that. I remember putting forth this thing and asking whether or not they would consider it. I don't think they have, but I'm just, I put it as to say, you know, museums, right? The museums have been lamenting the fact that there, there are no, there is no expertise in our country, homegrown yeah. for conservation, Martin, conservation. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I, I want, I, you know, so yeah. I'm, I was actually saying, so that's where slightly different thing, you know, diplomat learn our yeah. history, really important. But for someone who's going to be a, a who might, and because the taste isn't even ingrained yet, so if we put something in place where people with the propensity for that, or, or you know, some level of a scientific mind, some understanding of chemistry can come in later, right? When you learn conservation, yeah. for instance. So some basic understanding of art, your art history, and your practice is essential, right? And if we put that pathway in place, in small little modules here and there, which which you know, or, or some kind of. Um, workshops that they can attend and do these things then then you open up pathways where that dearth that we have at the moment we're we, you know huge expense bringing in expertise from from overseas to be to be people that you consult for conservation and things we should be growing yeah. it here right and that's all yeah. the, the birthplace of that should be art school right yeah. Actually, yeah. just just before i let you take over martin i just wanted to add you know um, on another point that i think that an art school or a fine arts program only becomes very successful when the majority of its students actually come out being either unemployed or self-employed. Because <laughs> if you do end up being employed, then I'm not sure if you're even practicing as an artist anymore. Okay, right, yeah. over to you, Martin. What do you think is, you know, the well, aim and purpose of the art well, school to begin with? As, as regards your point about what students go on to do, uh, it's an interesting, an interesting observation. Uh, uh, art school has produced more pop stars than any other institution. Now, you ask yourself why? Uh, and I think it's to do with the usual suspects, with the, the confidence, with the construction of, uh, let's say, a persona, uh, with uh, uh, the, the, the primacy of the visual. Um, and all of those things. But uh, as regards to the question, the, 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 the purpose and goal. Um, okay, uh, the, thinking about this question, I, I, I have an anecdote um, from my time as a student at St. Martin's. Um, and I, I remember in, my, in our first week, in my first week, we were given this really weird, typical art school uh, brief. I think they 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 asked us to do something like uh, make a thing without a thing, <laughs> and we were all kind of scratching our heads, you know. And uh, about five years later, or well, maybe six years later, I was teaching there, and I asked the guy, "What did you mean by this exercise? What what were you trying to get us to do?" And he thought he said, "We were just trying to fuck you up, man. We were just trying to fuck you up." <laughs> And uh, and and I kind of think that that's one of one of the functions. So you're you're you're, you're if if you're doing any good in an art school, you're disassembling the students. And and students certainly, if if, if you're used to teaching, you know how incredibly conservative students can be. So you and the only way to address that is to is to pull the rug from under their feet in some way. But then you also need to go in the opposite direction and try to uh, assemble something and with, with reference to something that's unique and theirs, whatever that is. And nine times out of 10, it's it's not the thing that they're showing you. It's some piece of rubbish they let fall onto the floor or a postcard they've put up on the wall or something like that. Uh, yeah, yeah. So. I think I think that's it. So I, 
Okay. Okay. Yes. Oh, no, oh, well, don't go for it. Okay. So this thing about 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 so the function of art schools, um, how they operate, that's one thing. But you know, the national identity thing is quite is 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 actually still in play. It's it's yeah. it's a default yeah, thing. I it's agree. a default thing. It's still in play. Uh, for yeah. instance, I mean, you you can you can actually it's just like you can identify. It's an aesthetic, isn't it? It's an aesthetic that grows from 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 within a culture that responds to the inhibitions, uh, you know, or whatever that is either natural or enforced or whatever. But over time, it just becomes like a nature, right? In in any country. So, for instance, you can can kind of recognize, definitely music. You can, uh, you know, pop music or or something. You you can recognize a Germanness to something or a, right. You you, you yeah. can recognize yes. this quality. The quali- We'll call them qualities, right? So, I, and I think something I've had to uh, I've written about. And every time I write about it, it does pain me. <laughs> One of it is the, you know, when people say people people do say this uh, uh, regionally. The the uh, looking at the little island at us, and you know, we seem to be hosting all these many cultures that seem always seem much more exciting than ours for some reason, right? You know, there is this feeling that all these regional cultures we're hosting their their uh, their cultural products, their their thinking, their responses to their dire circumstances, their their sad histories, all, all of that, right? We're, we're hosting it. And then when it comes to, to looking at the Singaporean artist work, right? Um don't know where the prejudice comes from, but if you if you look at the kind of work we do, I mean people have made comments. I have observed too. There's certain something quite clinical. So the, the, the cultural identity about what we produce in art schools or out of, uh something quite clinical about it. Right? And 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 it makes you realize okay th- this is its function too isn't it it's re- it's reflecting it reflecting back to the nation uh the limits of its dreaming right so that's quite important yeah and now that we talk about function right with respect to what the artists make you know earlier on when we we started off with you know kind of giving some parameters to art and design and you use a, a really interesting work to destroy design you said it was applicable right and and it also made me think of you know another parallel that is showing up that shows up so much so often nowadays which is that oh um you know the dichotomy between art and craft and so it's it's art and craft it's art and design and then what about craft and design oh, yeah. so so on, on what level do do craft and design um function as a parallel or a mirroring of sorts is it even is that even present i i think i i'm i'm I, i've got a little bit of an annoyance sometimes with the word craft but i i think uh okay so you you've made a pot let's say that's an, and it's a beautiful pot and and it's uh you could put it on your shelf and you could be so proud of it and then some joker comes along and says, that's, that's such wonderful pot, it's art. And suddenly the thing collapses in front of you men- mentally. It's, 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 it, it, you've made it worse by calling it art. Uh, and, and I think in that way, art is sometimes used as a qualifier for, for excellence. It's so good, it's art. It was, that pot was much happier just being a pot. Uh, well, a big, a, craft, a big craft, part, yeah, a big yeah. part of our um, education is learning how to I, I, interpret. I feel, I feel craft is what learning how to interpret. Say that again, sorry. What interpretation is a big part of the art education thing? How you interpret yeah, yeah. for context, right? Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. Exactly. I, I, I just. I, 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 just, I, 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 just, I, I want to go. But I think craft is like. Um, no, carry on. No, no, go for it. Finish your thoughts first. Okay. Uh, um, well, look, you 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 walk, you travel through Southeast Asia, and you see wonderful things being made, um, uh, uh, and they're they're just being made. People are just making them. Uh, and then you take you take them outside, and you put them in some kind of evening class, and you treat it as a as a as a, a an exercise in specialness. And, uh, and it's like putting an animal in a zoo in a way. I, I think it's there's something sort of mildly sad about about the way craft is 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 often used. It's just people making things and people making things that work. Uh, here in here in Vietnam, 
there's a lot of uh, street furniture. So if a carpenter wants to make a, or if, uh, let's say, yeah, if a carpenter wants to do a little bit of joinery, he'll quickly make up a table out of just odds and ends. It's absolutely fantastic and it looks perfect on the street. I could easily imagine that being taken into a gallery and, and looking uh, like uh, 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 another animal altogether. Uh, uh, but it's rightful places on the street. Uh, I, I appreciate that, that my, this opinion might not be everyone to everyone's cup of tea, but there you go. So, Susie, what are your thoughts on like the applicability of art? No, it's, it's a craft, I mean, crafts or... Where are the schools that teach craft? Where are the schools that, that teach, teach craft? I don't know, it's it's really the word the word the word craft and the and the way art is used as a qualifier for excellence, um, and and the place that are uh, well uh, things like um, art uh, craft and Etsy, uh, yeah. But uh, my thoughts are incomplete here, but I am yeah. mildly bugged by uh -huh. by even the word. No, I mean, art as a qualifier is, is a lot to, to do with, uh, I guess, human values. Okay, yeah. so in a sense, what uh -huh. we are, what we, what many, I don't know if it's all, but you know, many societies, uh, it, it, it's reflected in your language. And if we say the art of anything, whether it's the art of war, or the art of cooking, mm -hmm. uh, you you know that, it, and this is not to say that there is no science in it, that there's no craft mm -hmm. in it, there's all of it in it, right? But we are qualifying it at the, as the at the highest mm -hmm. level as the art of cooking or the art of gardening, right? Mm -hmm. And so that that actually reflects a, a state of mind about, and that's I think you know the heart of the matter. What art means to any society, right? It is it this value. It's an ideal. It's an ideology. It's something ideological. It's an ideal, right? And to some extent, ideals are all about the unattainable, isn't it? But when you reach that, you know, state of the art or whatever that kind of that kind of uh, understanding, then we all agree that okay. And usually, is is that kind of thing when we say the art of something, we often mean something that it, that has gone beyond measure. In a way, it's it, it's not about measure anymore. Okay. It's, it kind of transcends it a bit. It's it's an ideal thing, yeah. you know. Whether or not it's it's a uh, um, something that you beat people out with, I don't think so. It's just that it seems to serve a very, a very important part of the human mind. This this thing about something that that it, some kind of value that is beyond measure. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And I love that. I'm not sure if that's something that's distinctly, you know, rooted in maybe the English language as well. Because you mentioned the art of war, but you know in in Mandarin, in Chinese characters, it's Sun Zi Ping Fa, which is almost Fa, it's almost the methodology, methodology. right, which mm -hmm. somehow became art. And, you know, you talked about the ideals, right? And, you know, when we were having our conversation prior, you know, our, what do we call it, remedial session, <laughs> uh, touch base <laughs> session, our phone call, yeah, um, you had a, a number of tenets, right? Yeah. The idealistic ones, oh, yeah. right? <laughs> and, and it was not about creating the perfect art school, but yeah. perhaps um, I, I can't find a better word for that. But I don't know, would you like to elaborate a little bit on that? You know, some of those ideals. Yeah, well, in the notes I took after we, we, and I sent you to all of you, right? So let's see. I think we had, okay, we had things like, okay, because this is hot house, right? This is hot house. And, and it's interesting because I've used this, this word hot house uh, in an essay uh, 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 about the state of art in Singapore. Uh, and in fact, it's not because we were we you know were trying to catch up, but it seems like we are. Uh, the, it seems like the arts have been hot housed, and to some extent, when you think about it, it's quite different when you when you have a hot house plant as opposed to a something that has to battle the elements out there, right? So, to what extent the fitness the fitness I guess of our our, our artistic makeup. Right, this is one. So the hot housing, I was just trying to say that. Mm. Okay, this is where something like the 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 idea of the concept of design or designing becomes important because you design conditions for in a hot house. You actually do have to design in a hot house. You have to have aims, ambitions. You got to have uh, desired outcomes, um, possibilities. Yeah, okay, possible, but definitely desired outcomes, measurable. Right, your your hot housing kind of methodology is 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 that. I think, and then, and I remember posing a question to say, so how overdetermined is something like that? 
if you have a, a culture, a society that actually thinks you can hothouse art, right? Or anything else for that matter, but we're talking art, okay. Then the other thing we were talking about was um, the tenants, right? So I was also try trying to, I'm going to say that bringing craft, that's fine. So art by design, uh, you know, in coming up with that title, it, 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 I, I really like the title because it's quite paradoxical. It is paradoxical because when I think about art practice, uh, despite the fact that so many contemporary art schools are trying to put in place, um, well, research methodologies. When you look at what 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 a, a artistic methodology is, it's very interesting. You are borrowing from other disciplines, you know. And and I think what marks out the creative practice now is that the fact that you can, uh, you know, be an artist but have a methodology that is one of an archaeologist's, for instance. You could okay, think like yeah. an archivist and use that kind of methodologies or an uh, archaeologist or a scientist, but you're making art, right? So this is interesting. That research methodology uh, is something that therefore is going to make the, the art educational situation in, a, in an art school quite, quite a beast, right? Quite somebody with many legs, many things, many hands out the window, that kind of thinking, right? And so the art by design, I, I, I call it paradoxical, it's antithetical, but at the same time, I think I like the word by in the middle. So if we think about by as, as an art and design as being by each other's side, walking, walking the, you know, the journey together alongside. And to bring in craft as well. I mean, we do actually have great respect for, uh, when we say craft, not so much great respect for, but when we say craftsmanship, great yeah. respect for. <laughs> great respect yeah, for, great. right? And we great. still do measure artists by their craftsmanship. Great. This is... I, I'm, I'm glad you said that. Yeah. 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 So, and and in in trying to think, I you know in in writing stuff on uh, that was published by uh, the the Springer thing, art practice and stuff. This this notion of of teaching skills is important because I think where yeah. it, it very quickly falls flat if you're saying you know depending on like contemporary art, right? If all you do, if all art, if all we're training artists to do is reference another artist, that's just ridiculous. I mean, honestly, what's the point of that? You know, so it's, it, but that's what they're doing. So, so your art needs to look like art, I guess, before it can be evaluated and so on. So there's this kind of thinking, you know, you have a reverence artist and all of that, but actually well, you want to expose them to all kinds of things. I mean, it, it, it's, it's actually the most experimental space ever. It should be, right? So you need to teach skills still. You cannot just say anything goes, you, you go in there with a, you assume that all these people have ideas, but you have got to train them how to have ideas, right? And then, and then it comes from the practice. I think, also for the longest time, I don't know if ADM. I think they have it now, but for the longest time, this this idea of uh, giving people higher than MAs for for an artistic practice, right, to get a PhD, uh, people were battling this thing that you can have a PhD with something that is called practice land. So, you know, practice right. lab, practice based, yeah. practice lab, right? So, so yeah, that kind of thing. That's uh, the other one, the, the, the five tenets, a like quick one. I, we didn't have any five tenets yet, but we were talking about it, right? Right. Yeah. So I, I was suggesting something like, okay, so one, I've written about this quite extensively, actually, this, if I, if I think, if I want to, I'm very hesitant to, but think of myself as an educator at all, then the, the, for me, what I, what I would be thinking about is how do you educate the imagination? Right. So how do you, so it's about educating the imagination. Some, I, I don't think you've, you've heard of that. You know, it's kind of a strange thing to say. You just assume imaginations arise naturally, like uh, whatever, but yeah. So it, it's, it, we all have the capacity for it, uh, but how do you educate it so that it becomes a, you know, more than a hot house. It becomes something that has got legs, right? Can, can do its own thing. The other one. Yeah. And feeding it. Yeah. 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 But it's also thinking about, I'll be quick. Uh, Thinking about the 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 ways of knowing, so I wrote this this chapter in in, in in some publication, and I called it ways of knowing. So it's not about knowledge; it's about educating people towards ways of knowing, not just one way. Ways, right? How do you know? And one of the things, how do you know, is inclusive in that imagination is a way to know. <laughs> imagination is a way to know, uh, like as a, a kind of knowledge, right? And then you have experience. And then you have knowledge that's consolidated that to some extent will have a shelf life, right? If it's not in process. Uh, so the process kind of thing is very important. We, we, we need to think about ideas, ideals, uh, process. So one, one of the other things about uh, art school methodologies is 
focusing on um, the the artist process is something so bespoke, you know. It's, it may it have a big pat the pattern repeats obviously, and it's one of being you, you make room for you make room for um, heuristic heuristic processes. You can for people to make mistakes. You can make mistakes, and you, you and you must make mistakes. The mistakes are going to yield. Who knows what? It's all part of the process. There's no you know straight hit the very often it's just you you go on big detours and all that. It's part of the process, and you, you make a lot of room for experimenting and 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 testing things out. I think that's something that. How, how how much of art school allows you that if if all of your modules are heading towards an assessment time that is you know 13 weeks in duration or whatever and then show something and then i'm going to evaluate it uh, how long can how long for how long can you hold something at john keats you know negative capability how long can how long can you just leave it not doing something yeah Martin, did you have a follow up to that? I, I, I do believe that you had some convergences, you know, with um, Susie's sentiments there. I seem to vaguely recall that. So, yes, yes. So, uh, uh, there's a number of things that's come up. So, so okay. So, um, okay. Susie mentioned the, the importance of, of uh, the. the the program and the uh, program is only sorry the importance of the academic staff in a program and the program is only as good as as its staff and that's absolutely absolutely true i've seen that demonstrated uh uh, it, uh time and time again but i i would also say that the 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 leader of the program is is really uh uh the, 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 the value cannot be overestimated. And um, okay, if, if if you go back to Goldsmiths, the, the, that in its it, it's it experienced its best years as a result of the efforts of somebody called John Thompson, a very undersung uh, uh, academic. And uh, uh, before then, it was a pokey little nothing backwater place. Um, and and he the first thing he did was to uh, bring together the programs. There was no longer a painting program, a sculpture program, anything like that. It was just a fine art program. And then he, then he he started mixing mixing the years together in studios and in conveners and in exhibitions. So a first year could mix with a third year and all of this thing. So he did away with the first year, second year, third year. Uh, 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 studios, and but but the important thing, the vital thing, was that he had he had a vision. So even if his vision was entirely different and almost entirely opposite, he had one, and that vision was supported by the university. and And I think that's that's absolutely key. Um, uh, Susie mentioned the PhD, uh, uh, something that's grown in importance in academia. Uh, uh, I, I think it's had a really tragic impact on on uh, on on design programs for a number of reasons. I think uh, the certainly design programs in 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 Singapore, but there are a lot not a lot of PhD holders in Singapore who have a PhD in design. So uh, and when they're hiring, uh, when these people are hiring, they'll always favor a PhD holder, regardless of, of, of them, of, of other qualities, sometimes it seems. And I remember uh, at a certain design school in, in Singapore, these two people were going for one job, and uh, one of them was someone who had been already doing the job and been doing it really well, and the other was a PhD holder. And, and no one had even looked at the name, uh, at the title of his PhD, which was um, something like um the duality of spirituality uh photography and europe so in other words he thought it was possible to have a duality between two uh, three things uh, so, so uh, and I've, I've seen i've seen this happen in one form or another so many times so to, to summarize my slightly rambly thinking you 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 find the right person to lead the program and you give them lots of freedom 
uh, freedom as to who they hire. Uh, I don't think, uh, I, one, uh, again, to go back to Goldsmiths, one of the reasons it was so good for so long was that uh, um, they could only hire, the, they would only hire their, most of their lecturers were under part-time contracts, two years. Uh, they had to step out a year and then be rehired, which meant that the the teaching staff were in a constant state of recycle. Now, before that, I had come from Camberwell, and I remember being in the staff room there and looking up and seeing a picture of all the staff from, uh, uh, let's say, I think 15 years ago, 15 years prior to that, and the staff were the same, but the same people. And, and it, it comes back to that, to who does the, that question, who does the, the institution serve? Sooner or later, if you let an institution be, it will end up serving the people that work there and not the task that it does. Um, yeah, so, yeah, so that's, that's, those are my general, general thoughts. What else did Susie say or some, some other things? Uh, I love the, I love that phrase, sad history. Well, I don't know how to use it. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, that was fantastic. It actually, ending on quite a, a poignant note. Um, I'm also mindful of the time. I want to, to leave some time for Q&A from everybody on the floor. Um, but maybe a very really succinct response to, to one final question um, that I, I guess we penned down prior to doing our talk today. Um, who is art school? Who, should, who is art school for? I think that was the last question that we had um, on our list. Who is art school for? Um, I think, Martin, you answered a little bit on that already, but I'm not sure I, if you I have an alternative we answer. And I think we, we sort of came to a conclusion that it was for donation. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't it? Yeah, I, I, I think... mean, the nation's paying for it, so damn it. <laughs> Well, this thing called it's it's become viable in our in our very pragmatic society, right? To 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 have this because it's there's something called cultural capital, uh, and and uh, uh, yeah. yeah yeah and 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 there's all the infrastructure now. Well, uh, you know your your galleries and all of these sort of art marketing things that's happening. Um, so you know, ten years ago, not so vibrant, right? And and you you can see the change. But yes, I think art school. Who does it serve? You, you, you said that, yeah, very often if you're just creating, in the end, so many, so many art students graduate and then, and then teach. More yes. often than not, part-time. <laughs> I actually yes. think I've come to, actually teaching part-time is so important because if you want to maintain your practice at all, for what it's worth, I, you really cannot be full-time anywhere. I, 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 I've come to that realization, seriously, you can't. Because you'd be attending to all manner of other things other than your art. And art is a priesthood. Wasn't Sean Cock too, is that that? Art is not a pastime. Art is a priesthood, you know? So, yeah. Well, she wants to stir the hornets, kick the hornets' nest a little bit, actually. I would say that, you know, art school is not even for necessarily for the nation, but as it exists now, uh, art school is, is actually for the dominant. So the dominant can inculcate their own tastes and preferences into a new generation of people and to maintain their dominion, actually in some ways well if you're talking about what I, I i think i think as it is right now as it functions right now i'm not talking about this idea of the perfect art school or you know what it ultimately should become but ultimately as as we teach now you know art school is, still remains very instructive yeah it still remains very very instructive um but i'm not saying that it should be like this perhaps it's got to do with you know being in an asian country you do not talk Confucian sing, Confucian democracy. Uh, what, what was the term that Lee Kuan Yew used? But you know, you don't speak up against your elders and etc. But we have values. traditional values, so we we do have we we do find ourselves in a situation where school, whether art school or any other sort of school, ultimately becomes very instructive. And so long as it stays instructive, it is about maintaining a certain kind of status quo in terms of taste. And the distinction of that taste, those who have the good taste and those who don't have it. Probably so. Uh, inevitably so. 
yeah. But if it's called if it's if it's cultural expression and and you know in the end whether it becomes something that is that is I mean it should ideally because you know artists need to eat contrary to what a lot of people say and pay rent and stuff. Oh, that oh you're an artist aren't you so you will not pay you because you're living on passion. You know. <laughs> Yeah. So he, this is yeah. this is this is some so and and actually in that really strange and naive it's not even it's not ironic you know they they mean it when they say that your passion drives you isn't it and they look at you with envy and longing like if only I could have the same appetite for just passion right yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know no honestly yeah. and 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 so that is another instance of when this sort of thinking about art and passion and that purity of it it's an ideal. And it seems to be necessary. Yeah, yeah. Any last words before we go to Q and A, Martin? Well, I'm keen for the Q and A, so that, that's. Yeah. All right. So I think with that, I would like to at least say um, thank you to Susie and Martin first before we go to Q and A. Round of applause for our two thank very very job. lovely speakers. Um, and yeah, with that, we will let we will love to take some questions from the floor. Anybody has some a point that they would like to raise? Violent objections. Martin, do you hear that question? Not at all, no. Could you repeat it? All right. So I'll have to repeat it for you. Um, so basically, I, I'm going to try to paraphrase here and let me know if I got it correct. Um, he's referencing the point that you made about talking about a great piece of craft and elevating it to art and yeah. um, how that is potential, how, how that is a bad thing, at least according to you. And... Did I kind of get it? So, so I, I guess he would like you to kind of expand a little bit on an idea. Why is it a bad thing to be talking about a good piece of craft um, within an as an artwork or using the label well, of art I, to I, qualify I think, it? I, I, I think um, a, a pot has a function. Well, it, firstly, it, it comes back to that point that I was making that uh, art is often often used as as a term to elevate something. So it's it's so good it's art, uh, and and I, uh, art is a particular thing. Now, uh, if, if we look at craft, for, for the for the most part, craft has function. It has function. Uh, to talk about to to call it art, uh, it's hard to say that art art has function. It it does things, but that's the not not the same thing as a function. It's 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 an object which you throw out into the world, and you get responses, and it might or might not uh, address certain subjects, and it might or might not be received positively, um, and it might or might not uh, in some way address the artist and their feelings and all of these other things, but that's not the same thing as a function. Uh, uh, I, I'm a I'm a huge fan of craft. I, I've got a workshop upstairs in which I make things. I was a carpenter before I was um, uh, well. I was a carpenter before I was an artist. Uh, my 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 respect for craft is I actually think I have a greater respect for craft than I have for art. But uh, I think you just damage craft by calling it by calling it this thing. Um, yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Martin. I hope that answers your question. Any other questions? I think we, we do have a little bit of, of time. Hi, I, th I think it'd be great if you spoke into the mic so Martin could hear your question as well. Yeah, suck it to me. Uh, 
Um, thanks so much, firstly, uh, for your talk to the three of you. Uh, it was really insightful. Um, my question is, well, to be honest, it's not fully formed in my, <laughs> my mind yet, but I'll do my best to articulate it. I guess I'm interested, uh, perhaps to give a little bit of context, I'm an artist and an educator uh, from Melbourne, but based in London currently. And um, this is my first time spending any sort of extended period in Singapore. And I'm really interested in, in the conversation that's been had and we're asking that question of what is the purpose of the institution, of the art institution, what is its role? And I loved uh, the way that we touched on some of the things around nationhood and of course, the kind of ecologies that artists might walk out into after art school. Um, but my question is really, I'm interested in what perhaps uh, the three of you think is the correlation between sort of the, nece the necessity of the art school, the art institution for the artist themselves uh, and how that corresponds to the opportunities that might be here or not be here within Singapore at the moment for artists. Martin can go first. I still need to formulate my response uh, to that. Uh, uh, necessity for art school. I, I like that phrase. Um, I, I'll tell you. Um, okay. Uh, um, okay. Uh, when I was in Burma, the, the art schools there are really for the, the sons and the daughters of the very wealthy and for those who have the right opinions. Uh, um, almost all of the artists that I met had not been to those schools. What they'd been to was something that uh, was sort of an ad hoc institution uh, whereby uh, senior old artists would open up their studios to younger artists and they would kind of share, share space, share experience. Um, and that corresponds very, very nicely to the uh, ateliers in Paris, uh, uh, the beginning of the last century, where uh, exactly the same thing happened, where where uh, the, the academies were being more and more exclusive about who they approved uh, and who they accepted into their loving fold. And uh, these artists would do exactly the same thing as was done in, 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 in Burma. Um, but uh, so, so my, my point is is that uh, uh, you, you you remove something and and or you make it impossible for that thing to be attained, and something grows in its place that takes exactly the same form. So so it, even if we burnt down all the art schools tomorrow, uh, there would still somehow be art schools there. That there just will be. Uh, when 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 I left school, art, art school in London, I went straight into these huge shared studios, and I ran ran one for a couple of years. Uh, I had more students in these, oh, sorry, more artists in this in this studio than I, I'd had in in the, the art school from which I'd come, and we we were performing the same kind of thing. Uh, uh, it, it was to a degree it was an extension of an art school so uh yeah so uh, so so the, the, this institution called the art school is 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 i believe and it, it's an inevitable thing you talk about singapore uh i i think what one of the things that qualifies an art an art school is the network uh and and the network really happens between between the, the students, between the young artists. Uh, and uh, uh, certainly when I was last, when I first came to Singapore, this, this wasn't very strong. I gather that it's become a lot, a lot stronger now. And uh, certainly the studio scene has become more, more mature. Uh, I don't think there were, I think there were hardly any apart from the state approved. What's the name of that large studio that the, uh, that the state runs? Um, uh, to look yeah, around. One. yeah, it could be to look around. All good. Uh, I don't know. There's quite a few arts housings around nowadays. So, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, yeah. 
but I think I don't know if that answers the question, but, but it, it, it addresses some of the issues, I think. Well, and, and the other thing is also, you know, um, it's not like suddenly you decide you're going to be an artist and then you go to art school <laughs> because there are, yeah. there are art subjects in, in, in primary school, secondary school in, in Singapore. It's, uh, you know, you probably don't know, but you know, for the longest time, again, uh, it was really relegated to the, you know, 45 minute one lesson in, in the class in, is yeah. it still the same, Chihu? It's still the same 45 minute period, uh, in a week to, to fill. <laughs> you know yeah. do something fiddly and then <laughs> uh same thing for the uh, the music um session or whatever i think uh and in secondary school uh i many many years ago i think they did well not that many years not that many years anyway they did have some art specialization already for the for the secondary one and two but then again it's only very specific schools quite elite schools uh in general most of it um i, I, I just heard from somebody recently actually that that, you know, you, you can take your, your art as a subject for your O-levels, let's say. Uh, and, but, but they don't study art history. <laughs> you take your O-levels mm. doing set pieces of stuff, right? And they study something called the, the study of visual art, something like that. And, and it, it's, it's all just, you know, it's all just efficient, I guess, you know, comes down to that kind of thing and to get the job done and get a grade. Uh, and then very often, so people come out uh, and... You know, it, it is true. There is, there is. As I was trying to reiterate, it art is a very important part of being human, right? So you're going to have some some proportion of any society that would yearn and be inclined that way, a certain inclination that way. Uh, and then, if, if, if like Martin says, if there isn't art schools, then there there will be art schools in some way to to respond to this yeah. thing because it, it's it's all about a, a kind of space where people can respond to their society. Right, and it's not necessarily all, you know everybody's not everyone is a journalist. You're not all writing your stuff in the papers, right? You're you're responding to it in in, in making and all those kinds of stuff. So it's a very important part, I think, like you know, um, of any society really. So, but my problem is that this notion of art education. Uh, if you make a comparison in Singapore, for instance, uh, plenty of people in Singapore send their children to 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 ballet school or very early, right? or to go and take the piano or the violin, and then they learn mm. their, their proper theories, they do the exams, the ABRSMs, all of that. And you know, before you know it, people at 12, 15, I mean, they're fully qualified with eighth grade, everything, so that they are musicians. None of them come out to be musicians, but it's a part yeah. of their education, well, right? Almost none, I should yeah. say none, but you know, uh, it's part of their education, but you don't have that for other kinds of art forms. We don't yeah. have those kinds of things to say, well, you know, you are trained in a certain thing, right? Even when you're 15 or 14, there isn't this sort of thing. And, you, and that's not provided yeah. by the state schools necessarily. No. So Actually, yeah. on that point, uh, Harvard was the first, I believe it was the first art school to teach drawing. One of the first art schools to teach drawing and, uh, and art history. Sorry, one of the first universities to teach drawing and to teach art history. And their position was not that they were producing artists, but they thought it was, um, and I quote something like, it was a, a, a necessary part of a gentleman's education. Um, uh, and, and they were very explicit about it. They said, you want to understand, they said exactly what you had said earlier, you, you want to understand uh, nations, you look at the, the, the art of those nations. Yeah, I love that that you you raised that point because my own personal response would be would have been I can't speak for the necessity of the art school, but I think what is what I'm certain about is that one must necessarily get an idea of you know where they are get an idea of the place of their ideas and where it stands in relation to other ideas that exist around it in a contemporaneous kind of context, but within history as well. I think that must necessarily come out of an art school. I'm not sure how much of that can come out of, you know, an engineering school or any other sort of school, but I think that that's very important coming out from an art school because it feeds back into, you know, the second question that you asked or, you know, the follow-up question, which, about, which was about what happens after graduation and when they come out into the ecology. Mm -hmm. And I get asked that question a lot from, um, 
young undergraduates or even recent or even a level finishers who are about to apply to university and they would ask me like um how do you become a curator i want to become a curator too and i would always tell them to be well first of all you've got to be really cognizant that you're in a country that perhaps well if you're talking about it in a fine art kind of context that maybe has 30 full-time positions available in totality right a lot of them would not even be open to a recent graduate and for the entry level positions of which perhaps there are less than 10 or 10 let's just call it 10 you know for that matter there are perhaps 10 years of graduates that are competing with you for it and so the question does not become whether you are the best of your cohort but rather are you the most distinctive individual um there's a most distinctive take on things you know um upon graduation you know when or when you are not if not upon graduation is when you're applying for that particular job right and the only way you can come into your own very very fully and to be able to refine what exactly you are about is if you understand how where your ideas stand in relation to the ideas of everyone else are your ideas even your ideas at all or are you just subconsciously you know reiterating something that you had read and forgotten about where you read it from right so yeah that's my two cents on it um so thank you for your question uh and i think with that maybe we can just take one one more question yeah uh one more question is that good oh yeah 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 of course <clears throat> Okay. Yeah. So I've been I've been really sort of like itching to to ask this question, and I I hope this sort of like resonates with everyone here. Um. I think we are. I mean, I I, I personally sense that in in Singapore we are moving, we are shifting to a new epoch, like a new phase in um in art education. Um. With with like UAS, I think that's a examination of like pedagogies across. Everyone is trying trying to think of like what is the next step uh what is the next uh, shift and of course the um artists educators are also um in in this sort of like post covid um space um i think there's also a lot of like alternative it's not so um prevalent but i think something that it's uh available as well there's like alternate sort of like education programs um and spaces that also serve as some form of uh, education platform. Um, so to me, it's uh, like coming together of minds to think about what is the the next step or what is uh, speculating what is the future and and what what is uh, necessary um, at this juncture for for art education in Singapore. Um, is it something that um, the institutions can institute? Or is it that you know we we need to, uh, in in our own rights, also dream of certain forms of education that can happen outside of those spaces? I don't know. just, uh, yeah. Does anybody else want to go first? Martin. Uh, no. Uh, yeah. You can go first if you you've got something to say. Have yeah, you? I I do have something to say. I I I I'm not entirely sure if we are really entering into like a new epoch of arts education where yeah you know we're definitely re-examining some pedagogies and you know some well how credits are carved out how many modules you have to take etc you know with the new university of the arts which is happening in singapore i think that's that's certain um but how that shifts education arts education overall I am not entirely convinced that it will make a big difference. I think one of the biggest issues, it's something which I alluded to earlier with respect to art schools, is that we, we still have to come to terms with the fact that it's also part of like an economic machine. You know, it it you still have to pay your tuition at the end of the day. You know, a lot of artists go in there thinking that it's very altruistic. They are very altruistic, but I don't think the art school ever sees itself as altruistic. You don't pay the school fees, you're out. They want to develop programs that they can sell to as many students as possible. And once again, it goes back to 
this question of how you, you are selling, the schools ultimately sell a dream to the students, which might not be able to get fulfilled. And the defense to that is who says you have to become an artist if you studied fine arts. But I don't think there are many people who would say, I'm going to study fine arts without any intention of practicing fine arts or teaching fine arts or anything of the sorts. In fact, I want to become an insurance agent, but I am going to study fine arts. I don't think anybody thinks that. And until some sort of balance can be struck, you know, with um, the wider demands, you know, and the, the demands of the of the macro economy, I think that art school will always be a place where which produces a lot of sad, disappointed, and disillusioned people. I honestly do think that. Because you have just dedicated four years, five years, if you decided to do a PhD, maybe a decade of your life to studying something which is not viable towards your survival. And so I think our education in Singapore has to think really much harder about that as well. Sorry, uh, Martin and Susie. Honestly, I, I'm, yeah, I'm not sure I'm, I don't have anything to say about that. Other than if it, there's a, there's a, it's a buffer zone. Art school is very often a buffer zone for people who don't know what they want to do. You know, so a lot of people, yeah, come out thinking I don't want to do. Then the parents will say, let's just go to art school, <laughs> and then you fiddle around and butt around, and sooner or later you you decide, right? So a lot a lot of people come out. I mean, they're they're. they're I know, like, for instance, quite a few of my own students. I mean, yes, I have a few of them are still very much practicing artists. Um, but there are there's some who, you know, who, who's gone on, who've gone on to, 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 to be in social media, to do all of that. And those things do, do require some kind of design thinking, you know, all, all of that should, should be there. The, the artistic scope, the aesthetic response, uh, uh, color ideas, all, all of that are applicable in, a, in, a, in, in those kinds of uh, yeah, choices of, of what what they want to do after that. But very often, that, in fact, this is something that I think people are thinking about, right? It, it, it's what the new, well, current even colleges are thinking about because people do come up with their, from your O levels or, or even A levels, but mostly the O levels, right? Come out to, to do diplomas. And it's because they really don't know what they're going to do. Yeah, they don't even have to be good in art. They, they take an aptitude test, I think. You know, do a bit of this and that, and somebody decides, well, oh, we can train this one, right? <laughs> and then in you go. So it's a necessary, you know, and as we all know, buffer zones are very important. Um, they mm. are very important, because if not, all you have is just steep drops in between things, right? Yeah, so even even if it was nothing but that, it's more than that, obviously, but even if it was nothing but that, I think it's, it's serving its very, very important role in society, I think, yeah. All right, on to you, Martin. Okay, so the, the University of the Arts, so... Uh... Um, I, I was a student when the University of the Arts London was founded, except it wasn't called that, but, but then it became that. And, uh, and for a while it was actually a good move, okay, because some of the art schools have become very, kind of, I guess, inbred. Um, that anecdote about the teaching staff in, in Camberwell not having changed for 15 years is, is just one one example like I, I, yeah there's some horror stories from that time so for a while it, it was actually it was actually a good move it re revivified it streamlined if you want to use that horrible word uh, and it and it did make people more accountable uh, or it did make the institutions more accountable but the the university of the arts london is is to, different has to be a different thing but it had the university of the arts london incorporated what was it, it must have been about nine different art schools maybe even more uh, um whereas obviously there are only two in singapore and um uh, what it's become is a uh, it's an overwhelming slow elephant that has just grown and grown and grown i'll give you an example when i left london i was teaching on a program uh, uh, that was delivering uh, adult education to the general public. And it was making tonnes of money. It was about a, a million pounds a year, no problem. But they were doing really well. And then I'd recently heard that that programme has shut down because they took on too many staff and they couldn't get rid of those staff. 
So uh, it's what I, the point that I had made earlier about institutions eventually just ser learning to serve themselves. And um, uh, uh, now I don't uh, I, I don't think that's that really could happen. Well, I don't know if it happened in Singapore. I'm just saying this is what happened in in London. Uh, I know that I know some of the people involved in this, and I trust them, and I, uh, they're, they're you know honourable and, and decent people. Um, I, I think it all, all comes down to um, uh, 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 which, so these are the senior people, it all comes down to who at program manager level they, they are, at, at, at what level they, they, they intervene. Uh, uh, if, if they could recognize the people, people of, of vision and bring them into the fold. Um, uh, to come back to to a point earlier, uh, uh, why do people go into art school? And some, I think it was Susie that said, "Oh, you, yeah, the, 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 you're not. It, it might just attract some people who really don't know uh, what else to do." And uh, to be frank, when I was a, a, an art student, uh, uh, to be honest, uh, uh, I, I think about uh, thirty percent of them were just. You know the sons and daughters of the moderately wealthy looking to get a a, 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 a university degree, uh, and they thought, well, art sounds an easy way to get a degree, um, and uh, certainly I know that in ADM uh, the 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 uh, uh, what's the 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 ent entry the entry level at uh, the academic requirements of getting into uh, art school. Uh, in AD or getting into ADM were lower than in any other uh, school in Singapore, uh, which was a, a self-perpetuating thing because obviously uh, some quite you know low ambition people that's going to attract some of the you know low ambition people, um, uh, which is going to make the institution less energetic and it's it's going to be in some kind of tragic feedback loop. Um, but uh, I, I, I do know, or I do sense that, that, that there's a sort of a growing uh, passion for the arts in, 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 in Singapore. Uh, that's, that's the signal I'm getting from all these hundreds of miles away. Um, have, I, have I said everything that I wanted to say? Uh, yeah, I guess, yeah. All right. Yeah. Thank you so much, Martin. That was a good one. Um, and so perhaps with that, we will conclude today's uh, conversation. Uh, once again, thank you very much to Susie and to Martin um, and to all of our lovely audiences here who joined us this evening. Um, thank you very much. Thank you, John, for being such a beautiful person. General. Thanks everyone for coming. Um, yeah, we'll switch on the lights and actually y'all can just walk around and, and if you have any further questions, if you are staying for a while, uh, maybe y'all can ask. Uh, and I think if Martin, if you can stay in the camera for a while, if anyone oh, yeah, wants to yeah. have a conversation with you, we can, we can arrange for that as well. But again, thank you all for coming. Yeah, uh, see you around. <laughs> If if uh, we have some publications as well for sale and some drinks, uh, if you want to support the space, because we we, we run this independently, um, so a, a, anything wine. would help. Uh, as well as some t-shirts at the back as well. Otherwise, I think there are some stuff around as well. Uh, feel free to walk around and check. Yeah, thanks. First, it's a really lovely space. It's my first time here. <laughs> my last question was in that.
As long as she could, this was about two rounds, two to ten minutes, we had four games, four, ten minutes, like turn. The first two, she was going to pull the last, and then the third one, she was going to We have a sort of like a show, it's called Five Different so it's five different parties, so this is by Kanji Design, it's like a synergy media project, so they do a lot of, uh, um, Application. Oh, 